Good morning, all, uh, all respected uh, dignitaries. My corner. My corner. Good morning, all uh, respected dignitaries, esteemed guests, and uh, today's unprecedented expert on digital technologies of plant production, Dr. Pavel Novosky, sir. Uh, all dear participants, in morning session of uh, second day international online seminar on digital technologies for a smart agriculture, a futuristic plan, I, uh, Dr. Faria Khan, Assistant Professor, Department of Agricultural Entomology, Vasantrao Naik, Marathwada, Krishi Vidyapit Parbhani, extend a warm welcome on behalf of Nahib Vasantrao Naik, Marathwada Krishi Vidyapit Parbhani, Indian Society of Agronomy Parbhani Chapter, Indian Society of uh, Genetics and Plant Breeding Parbhani Chapter, and of course, uh, organizing team. Today, a luminary and uh, visionary personality in uh, digital technology for plant protection in precision farming, Dr. Pavel Novesky, sir, from Oral Robert University, Oklahoma, USA is going to interact with the participant on various aspects of the domain. Now I request uh, Jyoti Gagwa, ma'am, to introduce speaker. Thank you, Dr. Faria Khan, madam. Good morning, everyone. It's great pleasure to me to introduce the speaker for today's morning session, who is going to deliver a talk about a digital technology for plant protection and precision farming. This is a subject in which we should all be interested because it's by avoiding the spring mistake that we can best ensure safety to environment. Our speaker is a distinguished academician with a series of scientific publications, including three monograph, 10 laboratory manuals with a many project accomplished on the mechanization and digital technologies in agriculture with two patents to his credit and many more. Without taking much time, now I request to Dr. Pavel, Dr. Professor Pavel Navistri to deliver his address. Sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, uh, dear participants of the seminar. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, it's a great honor for me to take uh, uh, participate uh, in this seminar and um, I'm very happy to deliver my speech to this auditorium uh, to uh, India guests and if anyone from abroad I, I'm also happy to deliver my speech and my personal thanks to Dr. Gopal uh, whom we know uh, maybe three years uh, and we were contacting all the time and I'm just encouraging him for this uh, like patience and for his strength and for making uh, this project possible. And um, I will deliver my speech uh, during that time with, which is given to me. And if you will have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer uh, on these questions. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure for me to deliver my speech to uh, this auditorium because uh, three years ago I've been to India, I've been to Delhi and Amritsar, and I've been there three weeks, and I was very happy to visit that country, and it's like so wonderful. Uh, I saw only 0.1% uh, 
zero 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 maybe one percent of uh, total in India, and um, I was very pleased and uh, happy to see that country. And I will be happy maybe to visit that country, um, maybe in some future. <laughs> we don't know how will be our life, but it's it's it, it, it's a great like idea it's uh, my dream to come to india once again yeah thank you so much uh well so let me share my screen uh so you will see the presentation and uh, okay okay so uh so can you see the presentation Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Just uh, because of this, uh, some sometimes the technique is not working good, but praise the Lord that all of us here. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, my topic is uh, digital technologies for plant protection machines in precision farming. And my name is uh, Paul Nowitzki. Uh, I'm associate professor in Oral Roberts University. This is one of the universities here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the United States. Uh, and before that position, uh, I was working uh, as a Fulbright scholar uh, at Oklahoma State University in biosystems and uh, agriculture engineering department, uh, where I was uh, doing some research and reading some lectures. And before that position, uh, I moved to United States maybe two years, less than two years ago. And uh, I've been living all of my life in Belarus. This is the small country, uh, less than any, maybe less than some cities in India. Uh, it's, uh, this population of my country is about nine and a half million. I know that the population of Delhi is more than 18 million. Uh, so it's like a very small country, yeah. And it's in Eastern Europe. I, I've been there uh, seven years, uh, head of department of agriculture machines and uh, reading lectures on um, agriculture machinery, precision farming and other topics. Oh, well, uh, there are some uh, scientific interests. Uh, what I have is includes precision farming and plant protection machines uh, technique, which is used in the fields for the spraying, for the uh, treatment of uh, liquid fertilizers, uh, putting some herbicides and uh, some other chemicals, and also treat some uh, seed material before the sowing. Uh, and one of my uh, latest years uh, interest is precision farming. Also, the great interest what I have is uh, renewable energy. Actually, my internship for renewable energy was in India, and I saw some uh, technologies on this topic in India and was very pleased. Yeah, I had some uh, internship also in uh, some European countries. I made some research in Germany, uh, in United Kingdom, and uh, some other countries like uh, uh, China, uh, Thailand, um, some post-Soviet Union countries like Kazakhstan, Russia. Ukraine and some other places. Um, and first of all, I would like to tell some about um, my res personal research interests, uh, which, I, which I have in digital uh, technologies related to the uh, precision farming. Maybe I will tell a little bit wider than uh, plant protection machines, but I will try to put my focus uh, to the plant protection machines, and uh, <clears throat> and then I will tell some about our uh, like uh, is about our uh, teaching projects, like some um, simulators what we used uh, in in due to in, in recent years. Um, actually, I don't know about the auditorium what what is here, but I hope here uh, present uh, researchers. Uh, teachers, uh, professors, doctors, and I think uh, the most of this auditorium related to the university area, I mean, to academic area. Is it like that, uh, Dr. Gopal? Uh, also, I hope some of this auditorium related to the 
uh, ministry, uh, I mean, Ministry of Agriculture and some other technique. So I will, uh, I think this topic will be interested uh, to that auditorium. Okay, uh, so the basic direction of uh, my research projects is related to energy saving technologies and putting some uh, digital, digitalizing to the uh, agriculture machinery because my background is agriculture engineering and my focus is agriculture engineering and machines and technologies. Yeah, but uh, in uh, last um, like 10, 20 years, uh, this topic is more uh, collaborative uh, and um, more connected uh, to some other topics like <clears throat> agronomy and some um, biotechnology. Yeah, and uh, so uh, my latest project, what is I making? I'm making the system uh, which is uh, uh, preventing the uh, drift and using the uh, pesticide products and I was working on this project and I'm working on this project since 2018. Uh, I think um, it's not finished yet. There are some intermediate results. I started this project in uh, 2018 in Germany, in Osnabrück, and uh, also made some research in Yuluskun Institute, which is in Braunschweig in Germany, and made some field tests in uh, uh, Oklahoma State University uh, and here are some uh, photos and video from my projects and seminars and related fields. Uh, so this uh, topic, uh, what I'm telling about and drift research is very important because uh, using pesticides and liquid fertilizers in agriculture, we are facing with the drift and drift is significant, is more than 30% or 50% using the machinery. Um, it depends from machinery, it depends from techni technique, but anyway, drift is like significant, and especially it depends from the weather conditions, from the implement, from the wind, um, humidity, from the speed of the uh, machine. But uh, my purpose is to create a, a sensoring system which could be a monitor drift. Uh, what does it mean? It means that the operator who is working on the sprayer would have the information, uh, would have the information uh, for the, which is the drift amount right now. And uh, the system will be integrated uh, to the spraying computer or it, uh, it could be used like an app for the mobile device like Android or um, uh, other devices and so uh, it means that the using using that uh, device you, you can you can uh, you can check which is the drift amount, amount right now and uh, and using using that system it will help farmers to make solution uh, what to do with the drift or to prevent to make some prevention measures or to uh, avoid spraying or to stop spraying and so on. Uh, so uh, that kind of project I'm working right now. Uh, this is one of the uh, other projects what I had maybe three years ago. And this is the uh, projects related to computer uh, system, uh, which is used uh, in a, a seed treating, treatment machines uh, to, uh, to make the like a process of C treatment more co computerized and more optimized, uh, which is uh, not common in Eastern Europe right now. And we're trying to make it more better, this process, to avoid the losses of uh, uh, chemicals when we treat the seeds. Uh, some other projects we had, but this more related uh, to teaching improvement. So here are some examples which we made for the teaching process uh, in when I was head of department during the seven years, uh, we were uh, try to improve the uh, teaching process, putting some uh, modern implement to teach students uh, in the laboratory conditions, because uh, in, in our countries in Eastern Europe, we have winter and we have like a 
summer, maybe three months, but most of the teaching process, like a, uh, 60 percent of the teaching process is going to be in a lab in uh, some auditoriums and so we have to show them a machinery but the machinery is very big so we try to make the simulators for the machinery and here are some examples of them for the uh, sewing processes for the fertilizers and uh, chemicals to put like uh, to use the computers and for precision farming like for light bars and GPS uh, uh, technique. Yeah, some other projects related to grain cob harvesters and other simulators. Uh, so um, I would like to uh, tell uh, some more uh, general things which is related to precision farming and using some chemical products in precision farming. Um, uh, so the precision farming uh, is, this question is related uh, in early 90s uh, and late uh, 80s. Uh, so this question is like uh, quite wide. And um, we see that the population of, of the earth is increasing greatly. And by the uh, 2050, the growing population will be like more than 10 billion, probably. Uh, but uh, to feed this large amount of population, uh, we need to have a, like uh, to multiply the production of uh, food products. So we need to make it more accuracy and more precisely. And so, uh, which is precision farming? Uh, I, I will not stop in precision farming too much because uh, I think that the some lectures will uh, give some core things. Uh, I will just uh, tell some words uh, about the uh, communication of precision farming with the uh, with the sustainable development uh, agriculture practices. Uh, we know that the United Nations organizations put the goals of uh, sustainable development, and these goals related to uh, sustainable development. Uh, a lot of branches and also related to agriculture and uh, precision farming um, is uh, works with these goals uh, and um, I would like to perform the structure of precision farming which is uh, used uh, in uh, Russia in Belarus in Eastern Europe and uh, this experience were gained uh, from <clears throat> some other uh, places uh, like North America, from Canada, and from the United States. And the precision farming uh, is consists uh, like from three stages. Uh, the first stage is uh, collection information, uh, collection information uh, data from the sensors, from the farm, from the um, like uh, field data, from the cultures, uh, like uh, wheat or uh, potato, whatever we uh, use um, or from the region where we make uh, these uh, project, uh, projects or products or where related to our farms. So it also tells about the soil mapping, uh, yield mapping and so on. So this data is collected and then uh, this data, uh, the second stage is uh, analysis, is analyzing uh, to um, have some decisions making uh, which like uh, models will we use, which agriculture technologies will we use uh, and decision making is going to uh, the third uh, stage is performance solutions. Solutions to carry out some operations like uh, agrotechnical operations. Uh, what does it mean? It means that there is uh, two options here, which is related to offline and online. And uh, here in this uh, third stage, uh, some of these topics is related to uh, agriculture machinery. And that's what I'm, uh, what I would like to tell more about, about this uh, third stage, uh, about the making solutions. Uh, in agriculture and I will put my focus more on uh, digital technologies in 
uh, plant protection, but I will tell more wide about some solutions in, the, in this third stage. So uh, first of them is based on the um, GPS systems, uh, which is a uh, very wide question. And I will put my focus on the uh, like detectors, which is uh, helping to uh, make a driving of the tractor with the implement. They, uh, they could be very simple and um, they could uh, make some uh, some ruling system, uh, which is put it to the tractor. Uh, this is more simple, which is uh, related to maybe 15 years ago or 10 years ago. A more uh, modern system, uh, they related to the steering systems, which is inst integrated to the uh, steering system of the uh, driving wheel. Uh, some companies, they provide this equipment uh, already made on their tractors, but not so much. Uh, usually you have to buy some triple products or uh, TJet or some other companies, Raven, uh, which is <clears throat> produced this equipment. Uh, and this equipment has the, like, for example, in the right side, you see the uh, equipment, which is, uh, which has the low accuracy. Um, this accuracy, accuracy of this equipment uh, is suitable just for the uh, putting fertilizers, uh, even um, like very rude, for example, like 30 meters or 25 meters, because the accuracy is uh, like more than like 20, 30 centimeters. Uh, but in the left side, you can see the steering systems, which is, uh, which has accuracy uh, up to five centimeters uh, to 10 centimeters. But if you want to have a more accurate systems, like uh, three centimeters, you have to integrate the system, uh, integrate the steering system into the, the hydraulic system of the tractor. And it's not very popular. The more popular, the uh, second variant, uh, for example, here is the example, uh, which can be installed to the uh, Belarus tractor. Yeah. Uh, I think some of you saw such tractors in India. Uh, there is such movie in India, uh, by Laras, yeah, uh, which is, tells about this tractor. But this is the most popular tractor in uh, Eastern European countries like uh, Belarus, or Russia, Ukraine, and some other countries. Uh, so the system for the uh, auto steering could be integrated into the hydraulic system as well. Well. Uh, what does it gives? It gives the uh, advantages when we're driving, uh, and it, it gives the like more profit when we avoid uh, overlapping using some soil uh, treatment technique or some other technique. Um, is basically related to the most operations uh, on the field. Here are some examples of the digital technologies which is related to the. Um, uh, reversal uh, driving of the tractor, uh, which which is helping to like minimize time for the uh, turning uh, tractors and turning the um, uh, other implement. Okay. Um, John Deere developed uh, and other companies they trying to develop uh, some implements and system which is related to. Uh, not very like good landscape uh, when the tractor is uh, try to drive with the uh, to avoid the overlapping. So, so these uh, systems like uh, I guide or some other systems they uh, like uh, helping to avoid the overlapping. Uh, for example, uh, using the uh, GPS technologies uh, like GPS light bar, uh, it it helping to make like overlapping uh, like three or ten percent. Uh, we were testing this system and we uh, saw that the advantages are, are very high. And for example, you you can uh, you you can make a great economy. For example, if you're a farmer and you have a, a tractor which is uh, like, for example, um, 150 horsepower or more, um, 
if you use the, uh, the tractor during the season uh, in Eastern European countries, for example, um, you, can, you can pay it off uh, during one season. It means that your investments will be paid off during one season. Uh, this is our like calculations and our research. Uh, and also using this GPS technology, what we saw that uh, we can uh, like spend less time for the toning of the tractor with the implement. Uh, one more advantage of using the GPS uh, is during the sewing. And later we go to the spraying. So uh, for example, you see the row and this is the row with the overlapping. And this is the very straight uh, like row. And is, this picture is not from Belarus or from India or from other country, it's from Germany. And Germany is one of the uh, leaders in agricultural production. But you see that some overlapping is uh, related to 20 centimeters. And what does it give? It will give in future, for example, if you if you will see, uh, this is the uh, satellite picture, uh, which shows uh, the like a technological uh, path of the machine for the spraying, for example, or for the putting fertilizers and the width of the sprayer or fertilizer machine in that case should be uh, 24 meters. But because of the over overlapping during the sewing, so what we see, we see that we lost, for example, up to 3% during that operation. Uh, and we lost on um, time, we lost on um, fuel, we lost on um, wage, we lost on everything. So we, we lost uh, over 3%. Uh, so the next one uh, is the soil preparation and using the GPS in, in the soil preparation, we can make it more dry, for example, uh, plowing soil uh, is not so popular in India, but in Eastern European countries, we still uh, plowing soil. Yeah, and we're using uh, some basic uh, soil treatment. Okay, so the, I'm going to the uh, next uh, point is where we can use the uh, some precision farming um, products. Uh, we can use them uh, in a spraying, which is called like control sections and nozzle of, of sprayers. What does it mean? It means that the uh, our fields are not so very like ideal. It's not very perfect. It's not like a square or a very good shape, but sometimes we have to uh, avoid the overlapping during the spraying. For example, if the sprayer is uh, the middle uh, width of the sprayer in Eastern European countries is 18 or 24 meters or even 36 meters to avoid the overlapping, we have to put some uh, digital technologies. Uh, and later we'll talk about these technologies, but these technologies, uh, which is shown here, uh, this is the, for example, GPS switch from Amazon, but the same technologies use the T-Jet, uh, use Arak, this Italian firm, um, uh, an Italian company which producing the uh, spraying technology uh, equipment, and it's avoiding the overlapping to switch and it means that turn on or throw off the sections of the sprayer when they're overlapping. And to, to do this, we have to have a GPS, we have to spray uh, with the computer, and this technology is used. But um, in 2012, uh, the company TJ and Arag, they showed the equipment which helped uh, farmers to use the uh, s switches on every nozzle. If you want to switch the exact nozzle from 2012, it, it is possible in an industrial way. Okay, so in these areas, there's the avoid the overlapping. Okay, so the same technology is used during the uh, sewing. Uh, when we uh, like make a sewing, we can control the uh, uh, turning on and off the sections of the seating machine. Um, these pictures are showing the advantages of that technology with the GPS is on the right and the without the GPS is on the left. It's avoid the overlapping and uh, save some money and make it more beautiful the fields. Yeah. Um, 
So the next uh, point is uh, using this third stage uh, implementation and decisions is the use of variable doses of uh, fertilizer uh, during the application. It means that we uh, we put some fertilizer on the field and using the two technologies like offline and online, uh, we can make uh, decisions uh, what to do and how to make our treatment. Uh, for example, the offline technology, when we have the maps and using these maps, we put in the task and exact task to the uh, computer of the machine and is deciding which, where to put more or less rate of fertilizer. Uh, using some nitrogen fertilizers, we have to use the nitrogen sensors, which is widely used, uh, for example, uh, in the fertilizer spreaders. Uh, is already maybe eight or 10 years uh, during the application, the system is deciding where to put more or less uh, fertilizers. Some liquid fertilizers are also uh, can be uh, used this can use this technology. For example, the uh, online system can be used on sprayer. Uh, here in the left, you can see the photo. Um, here is the example of a Trimble system, which could be integrated to the uh, sprayer uh, for the uh, increase or decrease the rate of uh, liquid fertilizers, nitrogen fertilizers. This system is called Green Seeker and widely known uh, and widely used by uh, different companies. Here is the example, sorry, the some uh, part of this slide is in Russian, but you can see the pictures, which is called the crop sensor. Crop sensor, this is the system which is uh, was created by the Osnabrück uh, University of Applied Science in Germany and applied by the company class and Amazona on their technique, uh, which is um, measuring the strength of the plants and putting more or less rate of the uh, fertilizers. Okay, so the yield monitoring, this is the wide topic and I will just uh, tell some core things on this topic, which is related to yield monitoring. Our uh, yield monitoring is uh, widely used in Western European countries. Uh, some, some Russian farmers, Ukrainian farmers, they also use this technology and initial steps in other uh, Eastern European countries are made. And it's widely used in the United States of America to make a, a crop mapping, crop mapping to show wh which part of the field has the different uh, like yield monitoring. For example, uh, um, I can hear, uh, for, for example, having this uh, system, if, for example, your field is pro pro providing uh, 50 uh, centers per hectare or five tons per hectare yield, uh, you can have the parts of this field, which is like less than 20, less than two tons per hectare and some part of this field will be like more than 10 tons per hectare and it will help to make some decisions and here is some uh, technical things which is related to that system all right and uh, also a uh, few years ago in the uh, hanover exhibition they showed the system which is shows uh, the advantages of the applying of LTE technology like 4G and from December uh, here in America we have already 5G which is increased speed. Uh, I know that in India is very good internet speed. Yeah and uh, this uh, technology is using the uh, GPS and uh, cell technique uh, also helps to in 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 yield mapping and also helps to uh, other technologies. So the mapping, uh, harvesting mapping uh, is used on not only on grain, but on, on some, some other products. Okay, so, and one of the most uh, complicated system is a telematic systems and telematic systems. Uh, this is the complex system uh, in precision farming, which shows 
to the uh, central office or to the, um, for example, farmer or somebody who is driving these processes, where is the implement, which is the, um, which is the um, process are going on. For example, if you are doing the grain crop harvesting and in the one field you use the um, three or four grain crop harvesters and they're working almost in the same condition and if you have, for example, one model of this comp, uh, this uh, grain crop harvester, for example, uh, class Lexion or some other equipment, you can you can see uh, which operator works better, and uh, you can you can see which which are the um, settings of this implement here use, uh, and you can tell to other people. And this is one example, or you can see where in the field was the larger uh, yield or less yield with the with, with the yield mapping, and you can see different parameters. These telematic systems are um, used already in almost eight years. Okay, so some other technologies like a strip tillage, strip tillage, uh, which is uh, corn uh, growing. Um, it's this technology was started in the um, 90s in the United States and then went to Europe and uh, some um, some for example Germany farms they use that technology uh, to to put more procedures um, fertilizer treatment to the uh, corn what does it mean this technology uses for example if you if you grain if you grow corn before the uh, seeding before two weeks of the seeding, you put the liquid manure uh, exactly to the place where will be the roots of the uh, corn. And then uh, these roots will uh, like go deeply during the season and will take this fertilizer uh, in the first year. Because if we'll use the manure, like hard menu or liquid menu, we will have the profit from that menu in the second or third year. And But this technology helps to um, using the GPS technology uh, to take the profit during the first year. And it's already been used uh, like uh, more than five years in uh, West European countries. Here's like, uh, looks like this equipment. Yeah, uh, I made this photo when I was in, uh, uh, in Doyle Nienburg in Western Ger Germany. And we saw this technology uh, putting some uh, like swine meat menu uh, to the field where will be the corn and on you see the rows you see you see the pass of the equipment and after two weeks because we have GPS technology we'll uh, make a sewing exactly on the same places uh, of uh, where we put the menu okay so the next uh, question is related to robotics uh, which uh, is widely uh, widely used now in research opportunities in some some crop research and uh, there are some some robots which is used in agriculture for different purposes for, for example uh, if we will tell about the chemical uh, application so the use for chemical uh, to put chemicals in the gardens in uh, some some collecting data, even the autonomous tractors, uh, and so on. Um, personally, uh, uh, sorry, let me, let me let me let me put this sound off. Okay, so uh, several times I have been to the uh, Hochschule Osnabrück, which is the uh, University of Applied Science in Osnabrück and making some research over there in uh, Arno Rickelhausen uh, Research Lab. So they created this project in 2012 and even earlier, uh, which is uh, uh, call, called the Pony Rope. And uh, they already finished this project in 2015. And the next project, which is, you can see the photo on the right, uh, they put this on the exhibition uh, in Hanover Agrotechnica in 2017. Uh, so uh, this project is related to the collecting data from the crops on the field. <clears throat> so uh, uh, what does it mean? So uh, they, they they take some 
uh, data using the uh, Planck phenotyping and 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 they, they making for example the procedural uh, uh, procedural so soil uh, testing uh, they making the laser equipment like you see it now uh, they also have some sensors and make a precision spraying uh, exactly on the uh, weeds and exactly on the target plants uh, using this technique and uh, here you see some examples. So this project Bonny Rope, which they were making before the 2015, and now they're continuing this project with the Bosch company, Amazon company, and uh, Osnabrück University of Applied Science and some other universities in Germany. Uh, some other robotics, they use the sensors uh, like machine vision. Uh, it, using the machine vision, it recognizes the growing points of weeds, uh, and making treatment, for example, in, in that project, uh, they are making uh, treatment by laser. Uh, using robots, you can make a micro spraying uh, using sensoring technique or sensor fusion. You can recognize weeds uh, in like close crop area and doing a micro spray for these weeds. Here are some examples of other universities which is make a research. For example, I saw this robot in Harper Adams University in United Kingdom. Uh, they have in United Kingdom, they have precision farming center, uh, which is uh, situated in the Harper Adams University in uh, Newport, Shropshire. And they're creating some uh, precision farming technologies over there. Okay, so the next point what I want to make uh, our attention to uh, to see what are systems used in a sprayers here in a picture you see the old uh, spraying system uh, with the mechanical um, mechanical setting and these sprayers uh, appeared um, like in the 1950s and uh, to control the uh, application rate using this sprayer, we have to uh, use the uh, adjustment of uh, speed of the sprayer and pressure and size of the sprayers, and it's quite complicated. Yeah, and here in this table, uh, we see that in the uh, in the second point. The sprayers which appeared in the uh, 1970s, uh, 1990s with the uh, computer systems and controllers with the computer systems, which uh, allowed us to make a range of speeds. So you can using the computer system on a sprayers, which is widely used in nowadays, uh, you can you can make adjustment of the speed and into like in in some range, um, like. For example, you, you can you can range your speed from eight kilometers per hour until twelve kilometers per hour, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, this system is include the uh, computers like T-Jet, uh, Iraq, and some some other. And um, parts of this system include some uh, some implements like computer, uh, which th this device uh, sh uh, helps us to put the rate of the uh, herbicides or insecticides or whatever any pesticide it also include the uh, flow meter uh, speed sensor to control the flow meter is controlling the um, flow and shows the uh, this data to computer and the spray uh, speed sensor it controls the speed of the sprayer and put it to the uh, computer and then it, it goes to uh, put the signal to actuar uh, actuators, uh, which is the control, the uh, general controlment of the um, read, and also some sections controls, uh, and also some other wheels um, in the system. So, and this system is uh, put it to the uh, sprayer, uh, and it's widely used now. Um, and you can you can uh, adjust your rate, but the disadvantage of that sprayer. Uh, shows uh, that in self-propelled sprayers, which is uh, appearing in the beginning of 90s, 
because they uh, like have a wide range of uh, speed. For example, more than 20 uh, kilometers per hour, 30 kilometers, sometimes in even more. And adjustment of speed in a wide range, the computer system cannot provide uh, very clearly. Uh, in that case, you have to put some additional nozzles or you have to put some, some more nozzles. For example, uh, in uh, using the uh, glyphosates in like um, you, you, you have to you have to make a like a wide range of, of speed. Uh, what did they use? They use uh, some other uh, like nozzles. For example, uh, during the speed of 10 kilometers per hour, you will use the yellow nozzle, and then you you, you go to the green nozzles. And this technology came in 2012 when you can switch some nozzles during the uh, like move of the sprayer. Because of lack of time, I cannot show it more, but uh, it, uh, this technology is not allowed to, to use that. Uh, in, uh, in some years ago, uh, this technology uh, appears in uh, United States and then in some companies in Europe. The first in the United States made a case uh, and uh, uh, some other companies uh, they made this technology. Uh, what is the new technology they provide? They provide the uh, low frequency modulation uh, of the spraying rate. So the, each nozzle have a wealth and this wealth is frequency turning on and off. And by using the frequency, it can like uh, allow to increase uh, speed uh, like multiply, for example, Per, um, up to eight times. It doesn't mean that you'll make it uh, eight times, but you, you can use the uh, self-propelled sprayer in a wide range of speeds and you will save your rate. So this is one of the uh, modern technique with the uh, like high potential uh, in the precision farming as well. Okay, uh, so that that is uh, what I wanted to uh, uh, shortly show some 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 of these uh, technologies to you uh, related to the precision farming and digital technologies in plant protection in precision farming, and that was my topic today. Um, and in the final, I will just show this picture, which is uh, 120 years ago. That was the like artist impression. How will be the future farming um, in 2000s? Well, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, I will do more the gland uh, to answer these questions. Thank you very much. You accepted your uh, precious and uh, valuable uh, time for empowerment of knowledge regarding uh, digitalization based to various technique, uh, enigmatic and mystic points uh, regarding the topic. Uh, now I request all the participants to please ask if there is any query regarding uh, this uh, domain. All participants are uh, requested to Please uh, ask the questions. They may have uh, Mr. Mukesh Kumar has uh, one question, one query. I request host to please unmute uh, Mr. Mukesh Kumar. Mr. Mukesh Kumar, you may Hello. ask question. Yes, sir. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir, sir. Uh, this, uh, how can you help uh, scattered land in India by benefited uh, small farmer? Huh? Hello? Excuse me, once again, Hello? question is... The, uh, Mr. The Mukesh Kumar, please sir, uh, pardon the question. Sir, how can you have benefited to in, in Indian continent of so the small small scattered land in India because farmer is small land in India? Yeah. yeah, 
Dr. Pavel, he's asking about Indian farming system. How is it sustainable to make this uh, huge uh, investment uh, uh, oriented device? Yeah, when I've been to India, I saw that the most of the farming are there small scaling and it's a really good question. And you know, there are some approaches for that technique uh, using the uh, small mechanization small mechanization like it, it means that the small scale me uh, mechanization like a small uh, horsepower tractors uh, some small implements and the Mr. second Polomar. one is to use the companies which is produce the service uh, it means that for example uh, if you want to be a farmer you you have to have a lot of equipment even if you have a small scale farming if you, if you don't want to use your hands like it, it, improve productivity uh, there is like a wide space for the uh, opening companies with the some some investments uh, which will have the range of equipment and produce this service to the farmers uh, during the region or whatever uh, we we use this approach in Belarus from uh, 1950s when some farm farms they they could not to, to uh, like to buy the equipment to do this. Um, a lot of companies in uh, in Germany, there are small farmers. For example, in Western Germany, the farmers could be like less than five hectares. Uh, five hectares is a small farmer. It's not a 1,000 hectares. And they're using the, for example, one, one farmer, he can have only a tractor with the front lawn, and that's all. He doesn't have the grain crop harvester. He doesn't have a sprayer or fertilizer spreader but they have a companies which provide the service and they not even give them money. They give them like a part of their harvest. Uh, so this is the second approach, which in my opinion could be interesting for the small farmers, which could be gained to the, uh, in associations and made some, uh, some decisions in that case. Yeah, uh, there can be a, a supplementary uh question to this that uh, if this is the device which can be uh, reduced to a small portable size, will it be sustainable or uh, what is the break even break even for this device uh, to have a minimum acreage of land to uh, pay its service? Which device are you talking about? Dr. I mean this prayer like this big uh, nose of spear. Yeah. In my opinion, it can be sustainable because uh, most of the research is making on the small machinery first. If, you, if you're making something like for a big machines, it doesn't matter. First, you're making for the very small machines, for the one row, two row, three row. You make a research, like I'm a researcher with the uh, experience and you researchers and I see the doctors and professors and I think that all of all of you will tell me if you are making research for the soul technique uh, I mean for the soul implement technique you're making for the like 20 centimeter wide and so on and if you if you make it sustainable for the small technique you put it to the wide range so I think it's sustainable yeah yeah, it's very nice. Next question. Reshmi Bangare, ma'am, has another question for sir. Ma'am, please. Uh, hello, uh, sir. Uh, it's a very nice lecture. And uh, I really enjoyed this lecture. And really, it will definite uh, for me uh, in the research. But uh, I'm more interested in the machine you told about that is computerized seed treatment machine. I want more uh, information about this. Just you told about the application. If you, uh, if possible, please tell us more about that computerized seed treatment machine. It will definitely help an uh, Indian farmer. Yeah, the seed treatment machines must be used in every farm. Uh, so can you see the screen? You, you, can, uh, you can use my email and you can email me any questions or I can email you some information uh, about your question. Okay, sir. Thank you. 
So here is the my contact data, and you can, you can always. Uh, sir, you your can, screen it not not visible, sir. Please share uh, your screen. Once uh, I'm I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry. Is it working now? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Once, yeah. And you you can always uh, contact Dr. Gopal. He has my contact. I, I think he has a great experience in this as well. But anyway, if you lost my contact, you can contact Dr. Gopal and he will send you my contact and you will, we, can, we, we can stay in touch. Uh, oh, 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 definitely, sir. Definitely, I will call you and I will mail you my doubts. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Another question is from uh, Dr. Vijay Kumar. He want to know about any uh, digitalization technique will uh, able to help farmers to manage uh, the international pest like a locust. Okay. Digitalization in management of international pests uh, like locust. In international, what's once again? Sir, any techniques uh, in digitalization? Is it possible to manage uh, the pest like? Uh, Locust, which is uh, creating an havoc at uh, international level. In international level, yeah. You know, this question is very important because uh, if you saw the slide, which is related to the uh, stages of uh, precision farming, one of them was collecting data, and uh, from two thousand, uh, from two thousand seventeen in Germany. Uh, there is some projects uh, which is trying to uh, put this question into the some international level. Uh, so they, they are joining some companies like Class, like uh, Lemkin, like Amazone, and trying to, to make a platform, uh, inter, like inter platform, which can be used by farmers. Uh, the company class they made such platform for their grain crop harvesters next to on from 2009 i think uh and some companies they're trying you know it's not it's not an easy question uh to tell about because the a lot of companies they're trying to take money from that product and if you want to use this platform for example from class or from john deere with the with their data um, it cost money, yeah. But anyway, uh, um, some project um, they're trying to put some data together to use them in, in the international level. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, another query from uh, Datta Patil sir. He raised hand. He want to ask some question. Datta Patil sir. Datta Patil sir, please. Okay, another. Ah, hello, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may hello. ask question, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Pavel Nawiski, sir. Very good morning. Uh, you have given a wonderful uh, knowledge about the digital technologies. I have here one question. I'm working as an assistant professor in the Department of Farm Machinery and Power Engineering. Also, I am the co-team member of this project. I would like I would like to ask one question here, sir. How to measure the spray droplet deposition in the crop in on the go systems? To measure drop size? Yeah, droplet droplet size in, on the crop in on on the go systems when we are working in the field. You mean to say online? You mean to say online? Online drop counting system. Sorry. Hello, okay. sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I understand your question. Uh, so uh, that was my project is related to to uh, monitor dr monitor uh, uh, drift. And for, for nowadays, uh, there is no such sensor which is measuring drop size during the move of the sprayer. You can measure drop size using the some uh, uh, some approaches, but it takes time. For example, using the water sensitive sensitive paper, which is like yellow color, and you will see the green 
uh, sorry, you will, you will see the blue drops on the paper and you'll put them to the scanner and using the program equipment pro, like uh, software, uh, you will see the size of the drops, but it will, it will take time. This is the more popular technology for nowadays. Uh, now, last question of, for this session, uh, Ms. Neha Tiwari want to ask uh, some curious. Neha Tiwari, please. I'm just, I'm just uh, wanted to tell that if anybody wanted to ask question, maybe is out of this auditorium, you can always, uh, um, like, you can always contact me. Uh, you can, you can, you can always contact me and uh, writing me a letter or like uh, putting the Zoom conference, Zoom session or online, um, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm open for the dialogue. I understand that this auditory, we, some of you have specific questions and maybe related with, with, some, of, with some of you, we have the common fields of interest. Feel, please feel free to uh, ask your questions. I mean, um, in other time, no problem. It's just a time difference, 10 and a half hour between me and India. Yeah, sometimes Dr. Gopal calling me when I sleep at night. <laughs> and I cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you sir I'm dr pavel uh, one more thing yeah <laughs> dr pavel one more thing we are going to make this provision that we will have a one interactive chat bot uh, chat box uh, in our uh, web platform we will have a special uh, web platform on our web platform there will be a special chat box for you and our web uh, platform address is vnmkv.org.in uh, can you write it for me, please? Because I yeah, sure, I sure, yeah. sure, sure. I will write and I will keep that on the portal that I can chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Our our expert advocated all the curious uh, regarding uh, digital technologies in plant protection. I'm sure it will be a look active to students, scholars, uh, academicians, uh, researchers, and uh, extension worker working in the digital plant protection. I'm very sure the lecture and discussion will go on long way uh, in understanding the complexities and importance of using digital technologies in plant protection. Thank you, everyone, for their active participation in seminar. Thank you. Thank you, organizing team. With this, I conclude the session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so Thank much, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Pavel. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Gopal and uh, committee of the conference of the project that you led me this great possibility to uh, deliver my speech